In this video, I go over virtual network private endpoints and service endpoints. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. Public cloud services are great, but there's times when you want data in the cloud to be a little less, well, public. That's what service endpoints are for. They limit public access to some Azure services to a VNet or a subnet. Before that, I'd like to remind you to subscribe and click the like button if you enjoy the videos. Don't forget the bell icon to get notifications of new content. And thank you for subscribing. Let's start with service endpoints. Access can be restricted to a virtual subnet or public IP. Let's use a storage account as an example. By default, storage accounts are accessible by the public internet. The goal then would be to block access to only allow traffic from a subnet or a resource on an on-premises network. A subnet is selected when enabling service endpoints. The routing table on the subnet is updated to route traffic to the service endpoints before routing to the internet. Traffic from the subnet can access the storage account by its external IP address. Traffic flows over the Azure network, not the public internet. At that point, all other traffic is blocked to the storage account. There is a firewall for the storage account, so, for example, an external IP address or range of addresses can be added to allow access to the resource. If you have ExpressRoute, you can allow the NAT IP address of the ExpressRoute to the firewall to gain access that way. Here are some key points for a service endpoint. It maintains a public IP address. The service does not get a private IP address. The service endpoint is accessible by Microsoft DNS. Because the IP address doesn't change, DNS stays the same. It's not available from private on-premises networks. For example, you may want to access a service endpoint over a site-to-site -site VPN with private IPs. That won't work because there's no private IP assigned to the service endpoint. You can, however, add your organization's public IP to the firewall and allow access to the resource that way. Service endpoints are available with the services listed on the screen. Private endpoints accomplish a similar task, but work differently. With private endpoints, a virtual network interface is added to the resource that connects to the VNet. The network interface has a private IP address and behaves similar to other network devices on the network. Because the private endpoint exists on the VNet as a private IP, on-premises devices connected with a VPN or express route can access that resource over the private connection. The storage firewall can block all or limit access to the storage account from a public network. Here are some key points on private endpoints. All public access to the storage account can be blocked by the storage firewall. Internal Azure DNS resolves the storage account hostname to the private IP address. External DNS resolves to the public IP and network security groups are not applied to the network private endpoints network interface. Outbound network security group rules can be applied to other network resources to block traffic to the private endpoint if needed. Here are a list of services that are available for private endpoints. Also remember that private endpoints are currently in public preview. Let's see this in action. The demo starts out with a VM on a subnet in an existing VNet. There are two storage accounts configured, one to use for the service endpoint and one for the private endpoint demo. This demo goes over setting up a service endpoint and verifying access, then a private endpoint and access. Along the way, we configure custom DNS settings on a Windows DNS server and block public access to a private endpoint storage account. Okay, everyone, here I am at my portal, and I'm just gonna go through and show what I'm doing. I'm gonna start with the subnet. So if I go to my network resource group, go to VNets, and subnet. So I'm gonna add a service endpoint to the subnet, this one here called endpoints. And I just wanna show that currently there's no service endpoints configured. And next I'll go back to endpoints. So I've got a resource group here with all my resources that I'll use during this. I've got a virtual machine, and that's connected to that endpoint subnet we just looked at. And then two storage accounts. One is for the private endpoint test. The other one is for the service endpoint test. I've also got the machine that I'm recording on. It's behind a public IP that's not part of the VNet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to storage accounts. 
and I'm going to go to the service endpoint. So this is a storage account I'll use for service endpoints. Next, I'm going to connect to the storage account from both machines, the one on the VNet and the one off the VNet. So let's go to access keys and I'll copy the account name. And this is the uh, Azure Storage Explorer. I'm going to use that to test connectivity. This is on my local machine, not connected to the VNet. So I'm going to attach the storage account. And I'll use a name and key. I'll paste that name in. And I'll use that for the account name and the display name. Next, I'll come back and grab the key. I'll paste the key in and connect. And here I can go in and I can see there's a test or a temp directory in this file share. So that's working. I can connect to that storage account from outside the VNet with no problem. Now I'm back on the machine that is attached to the VNet. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to connect to that same storage account using the storage account name and key. And I already have the key copied, so I'm just going to paste that in first. And I'll come back here and grab the storage account name. Okay, so now I'm connected to the same storage account. And again, this is testing service endpoint from a virtual machine connected to the VNet and a computer accessing by a public IP address. Now let's enable service endpoints. So I'm going to go back to the portal and go to firewalls and virtual networks. And I'll select a network. And I'm going to add an existing network. This is what will create the service endpoint. So I'm selecting my subscription. And notice if you had access to more than one subscription, it would show up here. I'm going to select the VNet. I only have one in this region. And you can see I can add multiple subnets. I'm just going to add this endpoints subnet. And I'll enable. That will enable service endpoints for that subnet. And I'll click Add and then save. And keep in mind that creating service endpoints on a subnet has to update the routing table and may cause a disruption on any active connections within that subnet. So now that's done. Let's go back to Storage Explorer on my local machine that's not attached to that subnet. And if I refresh, go to File Shares, I get an error message right away. And if I go to Tables, I get the same message. So I'm denied access to that storage account from a machine that's connecting over the internet. Next, let's go back to the virtual machine that's attached to the VNet we just enabled service endpoints on. And here, if I refresh, I can still access. So with service endpoints, I'm only allowed to access that storage account from the subnets I've selected. I'm using a storage account in this example, but it would work the same way with a SQL Server or any other service that's supported for service endpoints. But what if there's a case where you did want a machine or a group of machines to access that from over the internet? For example, maybe somebody needs to access it from your corporate network. I'm going to go back to my local machine and go to ipchicken.com. This site simply gives me the current external IP address the machine's accessing from. So I'll copy that and add that as an IP address. And you can see here it has that IP address defined already. You can add a single IP address to this or multiple using blocks of IP addresses. So now if I click Save, and I'll come back to Storage Explorer that's installed locally on my machine, and do a refresh. And now I have access again. Now let's go back to the portal and go to Virtual Networks. I'll select the VNet, subnets. The endpoint subnet is where that virtual machine was installed. 
and now it's showing that Microsoft.Storage is a service endpoint on this VNet. So the way this works is access to that machine's public IP address is only allowed by defined subnets or by public IP addresses that are allowed through the firewall. Access to that storage account is still going to the public IP address though. There's no private IP address defined for that resource. For that, we need private endpoints. Let's do that next. I'm gonna go back to my resource groups and I'll go to the endpoints resource group that I have set up for this test. And here you can see I have a, a CIR private endpoint. This is the storage account I'm using to test private endpoints. So next, let's connect both of those instances of Storage Explorer to the storage account. So I'm gonna need the keys and the storage account name. So I'll grab the storage account name. And first up, I'm just gonna get rid of this one. I just detached the service endpoint storage account we were just using. And now I'll add a new one. And this will be the private endpoint storage account we're gonna use next. And I'll go get that key. And connect. So just like the other one, I have a test share. And I can access that outside of the VNet from a public network. So now I'm connected to the virtual machine that's attached to the endpoint subnet. And I'm going to disconnect the service endpoint storage account we were just using. Next, I'll attach the private endpoint storage account, again with storage account name and keys. And I still have that key copied to the clipboard, so I'll paste that in. And I'll come back to the portal and get the account name. Here you can see it's the same account on two different machines. Next, let's configure the private endpoint. Go back to the Azure portal and we're in the uh, CIR private endpoint storage account. And this time we're going to private endpoint connections. And we'll add a private endpoint. I'll leave the subscription as it is and the endpoint as it is. I'll give it a name and change the region to central US. So that's the name of the private endpoint. Now it's asking for the resource and I'm going to connect to an Azure resource in my directory. I'll select the resource type of storage accounts. I'm going to select a storage account, and here is CIR private endpoint. That's the one that I want. And the target sub-resource will be file. Notice that there's a sub-resource for each resource type on that storage account. If I wanted to set up a private endpoint for, let's say, blob, Q, and file, I'd have to come in here three times and create each one separately. So I'm just gonna do file. Next, configuration. And I'm adding it to the endpoint subnet I created just for this test. Leave private DNS as it's configured. We'll come back to that in just a second. Next, we'll go to tags and review and create. And create. This will take a minute or two to finish. Okay, the deployment is complete. Now let's see what that did. If we go back to resource groups and go into the resource group I'm working out of, endpoints, we can see we have a couple new resources in here. We have a private endpoint network interface and a priv endpoint one, which is the private endpoint we created. If we go into that, we can see some details. First, I'm gonna point out this fully qualified domain name. And notice that's pointing to an internal IP address, 10.0.205.6. That's the subnet this endpoint is connected to. It's also the subnet that my virtual machine I'm testing on is connected to. And if we go back and look at that network interface, we can see its IP configuration. Next, I'm gonna to go to virtual networks. I'm gonna to go to the VNet and DNS servers. This is the VNet we're connected to, and notice I have a private IP addresses listed for my custom DNS servers. With the default Azure provided DNS, when you resolve the storage endpoint URL from outside the VNet, 
with the private endpoint, it resolves to the public IP address of the storage service. When resolved from the VNet hosting the private endpoint, the storage endpoint URL resolves to the private endpoint IP address. So in a nutshell, if you're outside of the VNet, it resolves to the public IP address. If you're inside the VNet, it resolves to that private IP address. So let's give that a try because we have a machine that's both inside and outside of that VNet. So I'll start with the machine that's outside the VNet. And if I do an NS lookup to that storage endpoint, here it's coming back with a public IP address of 52.230.240.76. That's exactly what I'd expect. Next, let's go to the machine that's inside the VNet. Here I am on the machine that is inside the VNet, and I'm going to run that same command, nslookup, and type in the endpoint name. And that also is resolving to the external IP address, and that is a problem. And the reason that it's doing this is because I'm using the non-default DNS settings. The DNS server on this machine is pointed at a domain controller, which is resolving that host name through the normal external process and returning an external IP address. But there is an easy way to fix this with Windows DNS. I'm going to go to the DNS server. So here I am on the domain controller that's hosting DNS. I'm going to go into DNS and I'm going to create a new forward lookup zone. And I'll click Next. It's going to be a primary zone to all servers. And I'll add the private link zone name for this zone. Before I click Next, let me point out one other thing. I'm going to go into the command window and run that nslookup command again. And you'll notice not only does it return the address, it also returns two aliases. The first one is the domain name we entered. The second one is this cirprivate.privatelink.file.core.windows.net. That's the alias we're going to use to resolve the domain name to a private IP address. So I'll come back to my zone. I'll click Next. Dynamic updates are fine. I'll just go through this. So now I have the privatelink.file.core.windows.net zone on my DNS servers. Next, we'll add the host with the private IP address. So I'll add a new host. The name was CIR Private Endpoint. That's the name of the storage account. Next, we need to find the IP address. I forgot what that was, so let's go back to the portal. Here's the network interface for the private endpoint. And there's the IP address. So I'll just copy that to the clipboard. Come back to the DNS server. And paste that in. And add the host. Let's test that out. I'm going to go back to the server that's attached to this VNet that was resolving to the external IP address. First, I'm going to run uh, ipconfig flush DNS to clear out the cache. And then run the nslookup command again. There we go. Now it's resolving the host name to the private internal IP address. You shouldn't have to do that if you leave your DNS settings to default. But if you're using a custom DNS a domain controller, in my example, you will have to update that. Also, and this is important, you need to do the same for other private links as well. This worked for file services, but you'd also need to add web for static websites or blob for blob storage or database for SQL Server private endpoints. Although I don't have another private endpoint to configure, I'm going to add blob private endpoint DNS information just so you can see how that would look. So if I go back to the DNS server, I'm going to add another zone. We'll click Next. Everything's default. Then when I get to the zone name, I have to add the private link for the blob storage. Next, I need to find that zone name for blob storage. So I'm going to hop over to my portal, and then open up a new link. I'll include this link in the notes below for reference. But here we can see all of the private zone names that need to be added to the DNS server when using a private DNS server. So you can see here for blob, it's privatelink.blob.core.windows.net. So I'll just copy that. 
go back to the DNS server and paste it in. And click next to finish. So now I have those two zones. From here, I'd add the host name for any private endpoint blob storage I may have configured. And the unfortunate part is this would have to be set up for each private link type and the host record has to be added manually. So now that that's configured, let's go back to the server. This machine is resolving CIR private endpoint.file.core.windows.net to the 10.0.205.6 internal IP address. And if I do a refresh, I still have access. Next, I'll go to the machine that's not connected to the VNet, and I'll run that nslookup command again. So it's resolving still to the external IP address. Now if I go to Storage Explorer on that machine that's not attached to the VNet, I can do a refresh and see that it is connecting. One of the reasons you may be doing a private endpoint is to prevent machines outside of the VNet from accessing that resource. So let's prevent that next. I'm going to go back to the portal and I'll find my storage account, CIR private endpoint. I'm going to go to firewalls and virtual networks. And I'm going to allow access from selected network. Now if I just save this, so basically this is telling it to allow access from the networks we selected, and we haven't selected any. So now if I go back to Storage Explorer on the machine that's not on the VNet, and I'll do a refresh, and I get an error when I try to access the file share. Next, let's go back to the machine that's connected to the VNet. I'll do a refresh. And here we can still access it. I have one more thing to test. I have a site-to-site -site VPN connection between my home lab and this VNet. I should be able to access this storage account from one of my machines in my home lab. So let's give that a try. First, let's run uh, ipconfig flush DNS. That will clear out anything in the cache. And then we'll run the nslookup command against that storage account. That's what I expected. We got the private IP address in return. Next, let's go to Storage Explorer and attach that storage account. We'll attach an account. We'll use storage account name and key. Give it the display name. And I need to grab that key, so I'll go back to the portal. And let's go into that storage account. Access keys. And copy that key to the clipboard. And we'll paste it in. And connect. So it successfully added the connection. And we can see that test account. And let's just look at this URL. We can see the URL is the CIR private endpoint.file.core.windows.net. And that URL is resolving to the 10.0.205.6. And I'm on a machine on a different subnet, so this does allow me to access the storage account over a VPN connection. This is unlike the service endpoint that could only be scoped at the subnet level. That's it for the demo. We created a service endpoint, and we allowed public IP addresses through the firewall to that service endpoint. Then we created a public endpoint that allowed traffic from the VNet. We configured the firewall to block external traffic and tested it out over the site-to-site -site VPN connection to verify it works as expected. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Thank you.